afternoon. It's approximately 8 after 5 uh, on May 30th, 2023. Uh, the, my name is Todd Sievert. I'm chairman of the Finance Committee. To my right is Bill Roselle. To my left is Bobby Phillips. We have four items on the agenda today. Um, and the first item to come before us would be uh, regarding the uh, adjustment to the fee schedule related to the large refuse carts. So this something is something that we have uh, uh, been offering uh, very sparingly, but we've not had codified uh, in the ordinances, um, and that is when there is a family of five or more um, in a uh, primarily a single family, but in the uh, uh, residences with three or less units, um, so single, doubles, and triples. Um, and they ask uh, for a larger refuse cart, 96 gallon, um, than uh, what we'd like to do and what we did not do in the uh, fee schedule update earlier this year is to uh, add a $5 uh, I call it a surcharge, uh, to offset the cost of the cart as well as the additional tipping fees that we have at the transfer station uh, for waste. We try to discourage the use of the 96, but we know there are cases when uh, you just simply can't get around it. We discourage it because we want to make sure that we're maximizing recycling. Um, the normal size, I guess the uh, the uh, uh, prevailing size of the refuse carts uh, toters that we have are 65 gallon, uh, so this is a 50% uh, uh, increase in size. Um, I think that's all that you need to act on. There's some other information including in the report. Uh, we are amending the regulations. Those are an administrative, um, uh, our set of administrative regulations. Uh, so we will uh, increase collecting uh, refuse for residences with four units or less. Uh, we'll also, um, we'd like, as we mentioned, to add the additional $5 monthly charge for the 96 gallons. Uh, and we will uh, also collect additional items for special trash collection, uh, such as flooring material except tile. Um, we, I do want to note, and it's something that's starting in June, First is that we will not collect uh, concrete. Uh, uh, EPA has revised their rules, and uh, and so they have an issue with us taking those over to the dime mill facility, uh, so we can no longer collect those. They would have to go through the transfer station, um, and so if somebody, a contractor, or or somebody's doing. Uh, significant con uh, concrete work, then they would take it up to the county facility on 25A. Uh, we are not asking for emergency legislation. So to, just to clarify, we're not talking about the regulations today. We're just looking at the $5 fee for the um, use of the large cart. That's How many carts are there out there that are 96 gallons? And that would be a couple of hundred. 10,500 uh, meter account, so we have about 10,000 houses, a couple hundred. I, I, got, I'm, I don't know, I just, I'm just trying to figure out why now are we doing the $5 increase? It's something that we have planned on doing. Um, don't really feel that, the, um, that everyone else should subsidize the, uh, the additional cost. Um, and uh, with the uh, changing the regulations, changing some of the requirements and, and the do's and don'ts, felt like now is the right time to do it. Rather than waiting in, until the beginning of the year, next year, with our normal fee schedule update. Well, would we look at everything at that time, the, all the regulations? Like, I, I don't understand why we don't pick up cardboard. So when would be the appropriate time to talk about that? Cardboard is uh, recyclable. No, I okay. understand. Okay. But so spouting, then we pick up spouting, but we don't pick up cardboard. When you say pick up, what do you... What For you, big trash. 
Like, why can't well, we put up big boxes and get picked up? Because cardboard can be cut up and put into your recycling toter. Well, so could stop. I mean, so could other things that we have that we do in one of them. Cardboard's pretty routine to cut up. I, that's what I'm saying. I, that's not before today, right? No, that will be at a different time yeah, frame to have No, you won't. You, you don't um, codify the regulations. The regulations are administrative regulations, not legislative. So we hope so. We can certainly talk off record. Okay. Off record. So then the the ninety six gallon toter has to have a family of five in order to receive it. Is that correct? Yes. Household of five. In the household. Right. What's the difference in tipping fee? Five dollars a month. No, no. What you said it. You said it's to offset the difference in the tipping fee between the right. It's the additional, the additional wait, trash that goes wait. to the station because you're filling up a 96 gallon toter four times a month rather than a 65 gallon. Mr. Hazel, any these, these are our gray ones, correct? Just to be I'm clar sorry? clarified, these are our gray, our gray ones, because the bigger gray one. Runky, yes, Runky's Runky's green. green. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's correct. Mr. Phillips, any questions? What What are we What are we paying? And I can't remember on my bill, quite honestly, because it's on auto pay, and it's so I haven't looked at it in a while. So, what are we charging right now per per toter? Uh, for well, per uh, for uh, trash and recycling, seventeen dollars and fifty cents for both of those. That's correct. So they pay twenty-two. So seventeen fifty plus five. Yeah. Uh, and we have. What did you say? I'm sorry, Jill. About two hundred. Did you say, or a little over two hundred? Yeah. And these folks ha would have the option, and they have requested those because those were not. Yes. Okay. Um, are, are we notifying folks that have these things that uh, there is going to be a rate, a potential rate increase? Yes. And so, if they did not want the rate increase, they, increase, they could go back to the 65 gallon. Correct. Are we finding, and, and do we track uh, whether these 90? Six uh, gallons toters are actually being filled. Uh, we do not track that uh, okay. because we have no way of knowing that. Okay. Uh, we do track to see if they. We we don't track on an ongoing basis, but before typically one of our questions, and then we go out and verify to see if they're recycling. Okay. Okay. We so, also. How long ago have we notified folks that potential potential rate increase? We haven't yet because it hasn't been. Uh, we haven't pre-warned anyone. Uh, we've been taught if they call in and ask, but some of these um, residents. Uh, to go back to a question that um, Councilman Sievert had asked a while ago was, um, why haven't we charged up until now? And we didn't know really what the want was going to be when we first implemented carts, and so. We didn't want to implement a fee because we didn't know how many people were going to want smaller as well, like the 34 gallon, but really, or the 48, and how drastic were we going to get with our carts. So um, we also compared rates with other communities in the area. So some of them charge five, some of them as much as double. Like if you have two carts, you get double the refuse charge. Um, so we just thought that five was kind of a, a good, and when I've actually ran the calculations to talk about how long a cart lasts, you know, what would be the additional work, what's the additional time, as, as well as additional tipping fee, kind of seems that five dollars a fair fee. Okay, and we do have another rate for the smaller toter also. We, the 65, and then we really haven't, nobody, not too many residents requested the smaller, like less than a handful, like I'm going to say 20. Okay. Out of like the nine to ten thousand residents. Gotcha. Are they yeah. charged less? They are not. No. no. So why? Do, I'll be dumb. Why do we even have the smaller ones then? 
Well, I literally, I'm not sure the number that are out there, but it was for older folks that were saying, hey, we don't even put our card out every day. We didn't necessarily advertise it. It was more like if they called in. Like Tip City, I think, offers like a, it's a 34 or 48 gallon, and they get charged a little bit less. But again, um, we, we, just, we didn't advertise it. There's a handful out there, and that's it. How do we validate, How do we validate the five-person household? That's always going to be in flux. We <laughs> they request a cart, and we we discuss with them what they're recycling. Like they may say it's none of your business, but to the same extent, we want to maximize recycling. We want to, you know, and so then we're asking, like, I mean, if one person lives there and is creating that much refuse. Let, let me rephrase my question. What if I what if I say I want a ninety six I don't know that I would ever fill it, but if I wanted a ninety six, can I pay five bucks and get it with just two people in my household? This point this no. That's kind of in our rules and regs that says no. Now okay. our discussion has yeah, that that's in our rules and regs. So if I have five people in my five house people in my household and three of them go to college <laughs> I can still get it. We're going off of what people tell us. So if they say we have five people, if we say you shall have five people, and they say we have five people, then we go off. Let's we just make sure that they recycle and are diverting as much trash as possible. I'm, like, I'm not going to fight it. It seems well, like it, a lot of work for a thousand dollars. You bring up a good question, uh, a good a good point, um, and that is, you know, the other factor that we need that we can't always verify, verify. and we don't dumpster dive is, you know, if you have a small a, a number in your household, but you're uh, accumulating enough trash to fill a 96 gallon toter, then Probably we wonder if side. maybe you have a, uh, a small business and maybe you're commingling your business with your residential or some only residential. Or some of these to go in the wrong key container. Uh, so, and, and we do want to maximize uh, recycling as much as possible. I just think, I mean, you have a family of five, ideally, now we're giving them a five bucks a month sur surcharge because they're going to create more trash than other people, and that just seems odd to me, but I don't know. I'll I think but they got to request it. Huh? They have to request it. Well, I assume they requested it. They don't say we didn't have it in their possession. Yeah. So they requested it. There's a family of five, and now we're going to ding them so the city makes $1,000 a month. Or twelve thousand a year, we're having this discussion. Uh, <laughs> anybody, Mr. Phillips, anything further than that? Well, in addition, I mean, we do have to plan for the tipping fee period. So, if the planned use is two hundred ninety-six uh, uh, gallon uh, carts versus the sixty-fives versus the thirty-twos or whatever that number is, we still have to account for the tipping fee, regardless of whether it's used or not. And if somebody is knowing the potential cost going in, they can opt out if they don't want to do that. But I can see the need for encouraging the recycling because I know what my our use is, and it's very my 96. I could go down to the half one for what we use. And right. So anyway, I, I, I get it. And that's I, why it all balances and, out. Mm -hmm. But we'll, well, but. To your point, if you've got five and three of them go to college, then you can call us the next month and say, I want to downsize to 65, and we'll take care of it right away. You're not locked into a rate. Here's, you know. the, here's the good part, because we did do this not that long ago, and we, did, and we spent a lot of time doing it. Our fees are cheaper than anybody else around. We're very economical. We provide a good service. If the, uh, from my perspective, if the the end result is it is costing us a little bit more to purchase these, pass them out, and do it. I'm, I'm not really going to fight it. I just, I don't, I'm, I'm not big on penny pension people all the time. But anyways, anybody else on council have anything they wish to talk about? Mr. Jill? Yes. As a uh, retiree, I you know, if I could save five bucks a month on my trash and go to a smaller can, I'd do it. So uh, you may, as you look in your, but you can't. Into the future, I mean, there's enough, probably enough retirees that say I don't fill up a 65 gallon, but I would like a 48 or something in that neighborhood um, and spend less. You know, I, that that may be something that the uh, you might want to look at in the future. 
we, I mean, but we can, but to the same extent, one stop is one stop. So you have the same manpower with whether it's 65 or 48. Two stops with two cars takes a little bit more time. So it's all, it's all in the, I mean, we could, we could look at it, but there's less than two, I, I'm honest, there's less than 20 cars out there that are less well, than that's because people probably don't know about it. I mean, if I, I, mean, if I if I told my friend, we'd all try to say, yeah, we'd like to have a story. We're going to have a story. But what, what kills is that there's a whole bunch of big discussion. That's the same argument you're giving. We have a, a, a bigger trash can, so the tipping fee is higher. So if I'm putting less trash in, my tipping fee should be less. But there's certain base costs that we still have. Still there's the have. cost of there's the equipment, which is anywhere from three to $400,000 every time we replace it. There's the operator. There's the gas and operations. Those are fixed whether you've got a small, medium, or large uh, container. And so trying to manage three different rates for a handful of uh, 20 well, you, or less. You're talking 200, you're talking 200 buckets here. Talking 200 plus, we've got a, a, a waiting list of, of more that want to, to get the 96. So we've but got two hundred on one side now. If we spread this out to the community, community, you got enough retirees. You'd have you'd have a, a five hundred people that want a smaller trash can. So I mean, this thing is, it's you know, if we're going to open this can of worms. You got to look at both sides of it. It's, 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 it's just like the water rates. You're going to have a flat billing on, on the baseline of water. Whether you use less than the than, than the normal thing, you're going to get nailed for the bottom minimum water usage every month. So you're going to get billed for this minimum usage of your trash can, whether it's the small one or the medium one. They may be better off asking for another 65 instead of going to a 94. Then you wouldn't get the $5 fee. I just don't understand. We're, it's all going to balance out to your point. So sometimes your can's half full, sometimes your can's filled to the top. So. I don't understand the surcharge for somebody that has a bigger can that only fills it up halfway, and we're trying to accommodate them because they have five people in their household. But it, it, you just said that the expenses are the same irrespective of the size of the can. So I don't understand why we're do why we're hitting these people for five bucks. So there you have it. Well, and, again, this is this is uh, demand based. They're asking for this. So if they're consistently filling their 96 halfway, then they're, they just call us and say, I don't want a 96, I want a 65, and reduce it back down. I understand, but they're, when you say they, you're talking about a very small defined group of people. People who have five or more people in their household are calling you and saying, we want 96. No, we're saying that 300, 300 stops right now. That's the they plus another 100, 200, whatever we've got on a waiting list because we don't have any 96 and we've got to order some and carry yet another type of inventory over at the maintenance facility. So 300 times five, it's fine. Anybody, else? Anybody in the audience have anything they want to talk about? Okay, it is non-emergency, correct? correct? So we can get community input. Uh, Mr. Phillips, were you going to say something? Uh, yeah, I, I think this is more for the regulation end of it and, and looking in the future uh, that we do need to, to have those fixed cost comparison versus the weight difference, the tipping fee. That's the only part portion that we're kind of indicating justifies the cost. It's not... Not the fixed costs, it's right. it's the weight costs. It's the incremental costs. I got it. I got you. Uh, so I think that those are justifiable to be looked at, and and then perhaps uh, more discussion. What do you what do you mean on your regulations? Look at? Because we we analyzed I, the trash rates earlier this year and said we don't need a rate increase. So those base costs have uh, they, they've already been they've been out. analyzed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe we sent you a yeah an email I, I, I recall that but a I, month or two ago. the change of, of potential regulations coming up that you were talking about 
uh, that you were we were looking at administrative issues coming up in the near future? No, we had already we've already looked at the administrative regulations. Then I misunderstood what you said. Yeah, apologize we're, for that. We, we've implemented those. This is this is the last piece of that. Uh, all of these, though, will go into effect uh, September 1st. Is that what we said? Uh, October. So October. We so we can notify folks. So how how much data do you think you think that we need to to collect in order to see a justification in the five dollar fee? Do we make money off of uh, you know like Mr. Sievert indicated that most folks and I know I'm one of them. Uh, literally, one bag goes into my garbage can, and my recycling is full. Mm -hmm. So my weight is negligible, and I'm paying for a lot more, obviously. But uh, do we have any way to compare that if what these 96 units, or how long would we need to collect to see if these other 100 or 200 or 300, whatever that future number is, if that's going to justify that cost of increasing to $5? whether that extra weight will need to be paid for. Uh, do you understand my point? I do, and you're, you're missing one component. Okay. And that is, is that with your scenario, you've reduced the amount of trash that you're sending to the, to the transfer station, which our $17.50 is just using a basic average across okay. 12,000 properties, uh, 10,000 that, that we collect. The other part of the of your scenario, though, is is that you load up on your recycling. You are a heavy user of the recycling. That is the other component. We bid that out separately. Rumpke picks that up at a. Uh, um, I'd say it's a higher rate. I haven't looked at it lately, uh, but there, you know, there are certainly different and extraordinary costs of sending it to the recycling, especially when we're using a contractor to a recycler. Um, that's not that's not free either. So no, that's I, the other component of the 17. So if you if you really wanted to to analyze this, you'd be going to a um, it's a cost they per, call it a pay pay per bag or you know. And we we decided a long time ago that that was virtually impossible to really truly track. Okay, so I, I you bring up a point that I may have. Been missing, missing in that the rate for garbage is cheaper than the rate for recycling weight. Is that what I just interpreted? It's, it's it typically uh, is yeah, typically yeah. is, uh, but we pay our recycling charges uh, per stop. Um, so, like it doesn't vary based upon weight. So. We don't actually know what we're paying per ton for recycling, uh, but it typically is more expensive. We do know it gets trucked further because it goes down to state and automatically versus here in Miami County. So in, our, in, in the books, are we operating in the uh, collection, the refuse, refuse, or recycling? Are we operating in the black? Yes. And I know we have to because of future garbage trucks and rate increases on hourly rates. I get all that. I get it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone in the audience have anything they wish to add? Mr. Rizal? Move forward. Do I? Move forward. Mr. Phillips? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. Sorry. <laughs> Look, I, I think there's there's families of five are generally going to be three kids and a family or four and a, and a grandparent or something like that. Their five bucks is, is a surcharge. Call it what you want, but I don't think we need to do it. It's, it balances all out at the end. So I'm a no as well. Okay. This is a recommendation of the committee. Not today. Next, Next item is the uh, Employee Creation Incentive Program. Um, we have an uh, existing business that would like to expand. They've requested uh, us to analyze the, um, uh, the incentive, uh, the ESIP program. Um, they do meet the, uh, uh, the qualifications. 
they are looking at a uh, additional uh, payroll of two point six million dollars with fifty four new employees which as an existing uh, business meets the threshold for a six year uh, payroll payroll withholding rebate um, they are still negotiating with others uh, on other state incentives uh, so the uh, uh, the name of the company remains confidential. Uh, that is not unusual. We've done that in the past, um, and we are uh, requesting emergency legislation um, so that they can continue uh, to finalize the uh, project and then uh, start the hiring process. Mr. Rizzo, do you have any questions? So does this follow along the guidelines like the like TERP ter agreements? Tax incentive? Uh, this different is a different program. This is based on uh, payroll right, what, income, not, not property what, what tax. What happens if they don't meet their stuff? I'm sorry? What hap happens if they don't meet their expansion? Well, then they then we, we suspend the rebate. The rebate is a uh, uh, happens a year after uh, <coughs> After they've submitted, if they submit information that doesn't meet the threshold, then they don't get the rebate for that year. Mr. Phillips? I have no questions. Thank you. Uh, anyone else on council? Anybody in the audience have any questions? I think this is a good program. Mr. Roselle, how would you like to proceed? Move no forward. Uh, Mr. Phillips? Same one to move forward as staff is recommending. And we're recommended with emergency legislation. So yes. Finance Committee unanimously approves moving forward on the uh, ESIP program. The third matter before us is the opt-out natural gas aggregation program. Authorize MBCC to act on city's behalf, approve plans of operation and governance of the MBCC, and establish public meetings. Mr. Tiddington, are you going to be the... Uh, so one? the uh, gas aggregation opt-out program passed uh, fairly handily uh, on May 2nd. Uh, there is a state process that we have to follow. These are the next steps in this process with the, uh, the additional step of needing to uh, get authorization to join in with our uh, Miami Valley Communications Council uh, cooperative so that they can include us in their uh, bidding process. Uh, we, will, uh, we will also adopt the same plan of operation and governance as we did with the electric gas aggregation program catered to the uh, fact that it's natural gas and not electric. Uh, and then we are required to hold two public meetings uh, to discuss and explain the program. Uh, we are recommending June 29th at 3.30 and at 6.30 here at City Hall. Uh, we are asking for emergency legislation so that we can join the co-op as well as uh, make sure that we can publicize the uh, public meetings um, as soon as possible. Mr. Rizzo. Mr. Rizzo. Yeah. Questions? Mr. Phillips? I have nothing to add. I... Any other council members? Anybody in the audience? Mr. Rizzo, how do you wish to proceed? Proceed with emergency. Mr. Phillips? And same. A unanimous recommendation to proceed with emergency for the National Gas Aggregation Program. The final matter before us um, is relatively, hopefully simple as well, the purchase of an ambulance. Mr. Titterington, can you please tell us about the purchase of an ambulance? I don't know if I'd call it simple because we're talking about $267,000, but um, we do have two ambulances on order. Well, one is uh, was ordered in 2021. That is now projected to be available probably early part of 2024. We also have a 2022 model that uh, was uh, ordered that uh, we are hopeful to get sometime early in 2025. Uh, in the meantime, our fleet continues to age and continues to have uh, miles put on it. Uh, we were uh, notified, or we found out anyway, that there is a, uh, a demo uh, that we can um, acquire 
Uh, we have it in our 2024 capital improvement plan to purchase another ambulance uh, and at the risk of seeing further delays, we are uh, requesting that uh, the, the council just acquiesce, if you would, uh, that we go ahead and, uh, and buy that. Uh, the auditor uh, indicates that there are funds in the general fund to do that. It does not require separate legislation um, of the council since it is a state uh, purchasing uh, program item and that does not require, uh, normally, require legislative action. We are not asking for any emergencies because we're not asking for legislation. So we're just sort of nodding an affirmative nod to proceed? Is that what you're looking for? Well, you could do a report to accept, I guess, at the council meeting, but it is a, uh, an extraordinary item that was not included in the budget or in the footnotes, so we wanted to make sure that the council was aware of it, and so we figured we'd bring it to the committee and have a report generated. Would we, would we sell, sell it upon receipt of the other ones, or we would... No, this will be the one that's coming up next to replace. We still have two other ones that we're waiting to replace. So I gotcha. this will be the third so, one. So we'll just one. replace this sequentially. This will go. This will, this will be instead of uh, budgeting in 2024. For 2024 for a new one. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Rosell? To our suggesting, yeah, no. No. No questions. No questions. Okay. Mr. Phillips? Uh, going back to my. Um, statement a couple of months ago when I happened to take a ride in one of these units. Uh, is this Cadillac of Cadillac? I hope it is because that other one was really bad. Um, this is our uh, newest specs. Uh, it is a demo so you get what you pay for but uh, this just given the price tag is uh, got some bells and whistles gotcha. on it. Well it's a demo it should have hopefully. Mm -hmm. Not, I don't have any other questions. It was kind of tongue in cheek, my question. Any council members? Mr. Whitten. The, the standard number of vehicles in the fleet is it three, so we're just kind of working on that. For the no, we have five units. One and we in, may uh, have six just to keep them. Uh, what word did we throw our tools around in 1998? That means come up. <laughs> to the podium. But to Mr. Phillips, this will be the one that will be placed, it put back into a Reserve the one that you had the privilege to write in. <laughs> okay. Uh, but okay, for, for the record, Mr. Simmons had a uh, fire chief, sorry, almost said police, fire chief Matt Simmons has joined us at the dais. Fire chief, correct. Gotcha, gotcha. But uh, no, we'll, we'll still have two reserve ambulances. Uh, one, we just rebuilt the motor, the one that you, you wrote in, so we feel pretty confident that with the two reserves, we won't run into emergency situations until we get to the next two orders. Um, and then we still are old faithfuls in 1998 Ford that uh, we rebuilt a transmission in about a year and a half ago. So we're, we feel pretty confident. Do you keep the, are the two in reserve, do you keep them at the new station or? We keep one at uh, the new station and then the other one out at station 13. Any other, yeah. other, Mr. Schilling, I saw you kind of wave a little bit. Do you have any further questions? No, I mean, when, I mean, when, when like a demo, I mean, how many miles? Is, I mean, we, how, do, how do you base that this, this ambulance is, is worthy of the money? In other words, that is, I mean, is it based on mileage? Or when you say it's a demo, you, I mean, is this something that they've had at the factory? And if you wanted to see what they had, you go there and look at it and write in it? Is that what a demo is? Pretty is close. It, what happens is you have an opportunity occasionally to have a unit to take around to trade shows. Uh, we wouldn't be able to take delivery of this. It's a 2022 Ford, just like the ones that we're currently using. Okay. Um, but they do want to take it to one more trade show in July. We would take possession. Um, if this gets approved, we'll, we'll take possession and get it striped the way we want it striped, and then they will take it one more time, but it has 6,000 miles on it. So it's new, full new. And the warranty will take hold once we take possession. Okay, great. Good. Any, what do you, Ms. Uh, you look like you're into something, Mr. Pierce? Just for clarity, so we have three ambulances. The, this would be one of the three that are on order. 
And the other two are looking at being replaced when again? The the newest yeah, one that, that we'll, the, the third one that we hope to get, we'll be replacing the actual 2015, the one that's downtown currently residing at Station 11. But we have three frontline ambulances at our three stations. It's just been very tricky the last couple of years of keeping a fleet to be able to respond with three. Uh, there's been a few occasions we've had to borrow one from a different community, uh, but we're not unique. Other communities are doing the same. So, but yes, we have three front lines, and it's just a matter of trying to keep all those front lines in service. Okay. It's it's the downtime that really gets us. Uh, once they start adding accumulating mileage, about 100,000, it starts to become little things like you would have with your own vehicle. But what happens is the downtime of two to three days really hurts us. Uh, so we try to keep and stay on top. And we've been able to do that, minus the COVID shortage of chips and uh, Ford sitting down at the Motor Speedway for about four years. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. and, if I may. Sure. Uh, the the unit that we had the VIN number for ID'd, is that still in the pipeline? Is that the one that Mr. Chitterington was talking about? Well, that's one of the reasons we're coming to you to not cancel one of those orders because we're locked into contract price. Uh, those contracts could just fluctuate just a little bit based on the chassis, uh, but the contract that we had at the dealer is still in, in lock. Okay. Um, and so that's another thing of the price inflation of these units. That's We had a discussion to not cancel these orders because we are locked into a state bid contract price with this dealer. So. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else in the audience wish to address this issue? Seeing none, Mr. Rizzo? Move forward. Mr. Phillips? I agree. Move forward. Unanimously move forward with the purchase of an ambulance. I think that concludes my time up here at the uh, Finance Committee Chair. It's been interesting and entertaining, I hope, and uh, I will close this session.